What's up, Buck Dougaldini in the garage? Boy, do I have a good one for you today. You guys want to see some absolute carnage? I'm sitting here with my buddy's uh, GMC Envoy. It's actually a pretty nice truck. I didn't realize these things were full frame. Came in the garage because he was complaining of some noise that he was pretty sure was a wheel bearing and a bad CV axle. Now, let me uh, shoot my buddy some bail before we dig into this. He got this truck for free and was making the noise when he got it. Um, what we're about to look at is the result of some very serious neglect, not on my buddy though. So what we had in this truck was a CV axle that went bad, simple enough, right? Problem is, uh, the previous owner, the previous previous owner ignored it. Uh, and the result was total failure of the CV axle. Now, I did not uh, start making a video on this because it was not originally going to be a very interesting project. So I was gonna jimmy jam a new CV axle and wheel bearing in there and we were gonna be done with it. As I started uncovering things, inside the truck, I started taking videos for Instagram. So what I'm gonna do is show you the three Instagram videos now. They're uh, not great quality because they were taken on my phone. I wanna do it this way because it shows the progression I slowly found more and more. So here, check those videos out. I think the volume, there may be volume issues. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to fix it in post. If there are, I apologize. I'll see you guys in about a minute and a half. All righty, we got this fine piece of Detroit luxury, GMC, none of that low rent Chevy. In here, complaining of some weird noises. We got in there, started investigating. I'll be dipped if I don't think that might not have something to do with it. Yep, that was just sort of flopping around in there. And this, if you can see, it's just sort of flopping around in there. So I'm not really sure what we're going to find once we uh, get in there a little deeper, but there you go. Alrighty, friends, this is the business end of the CV axle for this lovely GMC. I see how it's Looks like it's covered in uh, anti-seize, molybdenum disulfide. Never a good thing. Then you'll notice these radial scratches all along where it would go into the inner bearing housing. Yep. Yep, we've got some carnage there. So, this is the inner bearing race flopping around. This is all bits of metal from it scraping. It was getting so far out, it was beating up this four-wheel drive module. So we need a new bearing housing and a new four-wheel drive module. I'm sure that'll be cheap, right? Definitely. Great. Oh, buddy. It is not good. So here you have the uh, four-wheel drive shifter assembly. Uh, I guess at some point this was some sort of bearing inner race, uh, outer race, chunks of... Oh, I'm just not even sure. Here's your shift fork. Totally KO'd because uh, you had this metallic grit rolling around in here for the last God knows how many miles. I mean, there's a significant amount of metal built up in here additionally. And yeah, that's the unfortunate part. This is the uh, four wheel drive unit. You see it was getting smashed by the CV axle. Uh, I think it's broken in here. This is like the actuator that uh, moved this fork to lock four wheel drive. It's KO and I, I'm not certain that these two together are an inexpensive fix. So when your CV starts making noise, I guess do something about it. Otherwise you'll be here. All right, you will recognize all of these scarred, marred bits of metal from the first video. Uh, this is half of the housing, which I did not realize in that first video. Uh, this is your selector ring, your fork rides on there. This actuator moves this fork in and out and then it locks this ring to another ring that's going into the transmission. So, if you're not in four-wheel drive, uh, I believe this ring is pushed back and it's just riding on that transmission ring. Uh, and if you are in four-wheel drive, it moves forward and it engages this, which your CV axle goes into, and you've got transmission through this, through this, the CV and out. Done and done. Simple enough, kind of. Now, to get a closer look at how bad this is, look at all the metal in this grease. I mean, it's absolutely, it's nuts. I don't know if that's gonna focus properly, but it's absolutely crazy the amount of damage this did. And while I don't know for sure, I'm pretty sure that the series of events went, the CV axle broke, it was then banging around, it was making contact with this, which for reference, went like this. Well, that thing's broken anyway. This was in there. <clears throat> Does that make sense? So your CV axle is going out that way. 
this guy's spinning like this. Every time the CV axle comes around, it bangs this, and it's beating up this, this uh, internal bearing, which this whole thing would have rode on. Now, all of a sudden, you've got this thing just clanging around like that. That's what you saw in the first videos there. Uh, and it, it just slowly pulverized the internal bearing parts. There's these bits of, are these plastic? No, these are metal, so these were part of the internal bearing race. They're all broken and just covered in essentially abrasive grease now. Uh, and, and so much of it, I mean, it's just crazy the mess this made. So my buddy went out and got the new uh, bearing housing, four wheel drive bearing housing. It's got a couple different names. The problem is, and you'll notice, and I didn't realize this at first, this piece here. I thought that this piece was integral to the transmission. I thought that all I needed was this front piece. That's not the case. It turns out this piece that didn't come off with this thing the other day is seized in there. And I've been at it for about two hours and I can't break or loose. Uh, I'm thinking it would need to get up on a lift. It would need to get maybe a, someone with a crazy puller. It's, it's, there's not a lot of room to work in there and I don't know how you'd grab on it and it's aluminum so you don't wanna just break the darn thing. It's possible that the whole I think this all goes into the transmission pan. I'm not really sure with this front wheel drive setup what they consider that, if it's a transfer case or a center section or if it's really just another part of the transmission, but whatever it is, it has a very deep aluminum um, pan and you could take that down, I guess, but you'd have to take apart the whole other side. It's way more work. Uh, this truck is 170,000 miles, so we're not sure if this isn't the thing that does it in. My buddy's heading over here right now. We're gonna have the unfortunate conversation where I let him know that uh, we're fully hooped on this one. Alrighty, so for further perspective, this is the housing in question that is seized on. This is that uh, gear that is riding on this transmission shaft. This is what would be engaged by that shift fork to lock this shaft to your CV shaft, essentially. So we're gonna find out today if you can drive a GMC Envoy without a front uh, CV shaft, potentially. Uh, Cause I don't know how else I'm gonna get out of my garage. Cause as you may have noticed, this thing's currently dead in the water in my wife's spot. She's been super happy about that as we're having a cold snap in Jersey. Her car's been parked outside while it's 10 degrees in the morning. So uh, I'm not in the doghouse yet, but I, I will be pretty soon if we don't get this hunk of GMC luxury out of here. Good news, friends. We got the GMC out of the garage. Wife's Jeep was able to go in, which is good because it's about nine degrees Frankenstein this morning, which means had the wife's Jeep been outside, I may have been sleeping in the avalanche tonight. Uh, here's what happened with the GMC. We gave it another good hour of prying and banging and jimmy jamming. There was, there was no go, that thing wasn't coming out. I don't know if it's seized in there, if it's melted in there. We don't know what the situation is. Uh, we put it back together without the CV axle in it just so that we could move it. I know, that's like not at all an okay thing to do. We're not taking it on a road trip, we're not driving it to work all week, it's literally to roll it out of the garage and likely roll it onto a, uh, uh, a flatbed to, to go somewhere. What's up guys, I'm coming to you from the future because it occurred to me as I was editing that I kind of glossed over the whole CV axle delete thing and why it's a very, very, very bad idea. I would be remiss if I did not fully explain why this is not a viable option ever. Let me explain your wheel bearing. Your wheel bearing is just a bearing and there's two housings. There's the outer housing, which bolts to your um, vehicle, essentially. It bolts straight to your hub. And then there's the inner housing, which is what's attached to your wheel through the studs. It, it's pressed all together. You got the outer housing, the inner housing, and the wheel bearing, and they're all pressed together. But you need something to hold them together. And the thing that does that is the shaft on the end of a CV axle. That giant nut that you have to torque down to 120, 150, 175 foot-pounds, the reason you're doing that, it's not to prevent your CV axle from falling out, because it can't fall out. It's stuck there between whatever's on the vehicle side and the knuckle. Um, what it's doing, and the reason that's so important, is it's holding that wheel bearing together. So if you remove that CV axle, there's nothing holding that wheel bearing together, so while you're turning, driving, the forces of uh, moving down the road will very quickly cause that wheel bearing assembly to separate. And when it separates, your wheel goes that way, your vehicle goes that way, and you end up like Uncle Jerry in a ditch. So, you cannot do a CV axle delete. We only did it to get this thing out of the garage and onto a flatbed. Um, it's it's not it's not for driving around. I just figured I'd cut in and say that before one of you meatheads goes ahead and does a CV axle delete and you end up in the ditch and you're blaming old DNA in the garage. Back to the video. Um, for him, for my buddy, it doesn't make sense. 
to put in the work to fix it. Uh, it's not really a project I want to take on. I already have one dilapidated uh, piece of GM iron sitting in my driveway. I don't need a second one. Uh, so it's going to go on and maybe part it out. Uh, we're going to try to avoid scrapping it because the darn truck's in good shape otherwise. The previous owner, not my buddy, uh, garage kept the darn thing so there's no rust underneath for being a jersey gmc truck she she's in pretty good shape i'll be darned if that thing didn't have a brake controller on it even though it had the 4.2 v6 and they are full frame so uh i have to go and look up what the tow capacity is on one of those things i'm surprised i always thought of the gmc envoy as just being kind of like a another gutless uh homogenized mid-2000s SUV, you know, the way so many were uh, in that time frame, but may maybe not. I don't know. If any of you guys have GMC Envoys or I guess the Trailblazers, the same thing, right? My buddy was saying he found a whole bunch of forums for guys who are really into Trailblazers and Envoys of that time period. I, I didn't know. I guess they probably came with the 5.3, right? So, I don't know. So leave me a comment down in the squawk box is what's the worst failure you've ever seen or experienced? I don't even know if this is the worst failure I've ever seen. It's probably top three, definitely top five, but I've seen some I've seen some pretty gnarly stuff. We may have to put together a video uh, just of our worst carnage stories sometime. Uh, if you're in the area and you want a parts envoy, let me know. Um, my buddy's, I don't know if he's gonna part it out or sell it as a whole or maybe, maybe try to fix it. Probably not though. If you like the video, go ahead and like the video. That's common sense, right? Subscribe to the channel. Consider checking us out on Patreon, Teespring, and Etsy. Additionally, there's a pinned comment down below uh, with a link to it to a fundraising page that Eric and I are a part of. We're raising money for the Special Olympics via the Polar Plunge. On February 22nd, we're going to dive into the frozen Atlantic to benefit the Polar Plunge. If you could throw a dollar or two towards our cause, we would greatly appreciate it. As a team, teamed up with uh, a special needs school in our area and uh, another, a couple of the YouTubers and some stuff, we're trying to raise $5,000 as a team. We're about halfway there. So if you got a dollar or two to throw in the pot, it would mean a lot to us. Uh, if not, no worries though. Go check out the video from last year, the Polar Plunge. We had a great time and it's hilarious to watch me, Eric, and Project Dan jump into the frozen Atlantic. All right, as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.